Number 66. A ship sailing in the Gulf Stream is heading 25 degrees west of north at a speed of 4 meters per second relative to the water. Its velocity relative to the Earth is 4.8 meters per second at 5 degrees west of north. What is the velocity of the Gulf Stream? All right. So here I have drawn a coordinate system with the vectors given in the problem. So here is the velocity of the ship relative to the water. They said it's traveling at a velocity of 4 meters per second. And it is at an angle of 25 degrees uh, west of north. Uh, they also told me that uh, there is the uh, velocity of the uh, ship relative to the earth. They gave that to us as well. That is 4.80 meters per second. And it's at a five, an, uh, an angle of 5 degrees west of north. Okay. So what they're asking us now uh, is they're asking us then to find what is the velocity of the Gulf Stream, right? So really, um, if I were to write it out in terms of relative velocities, they're asking us to find the velocity of the Gulf Stream, uh, which I'm going to label as the water, okay? So velocity of the water relative to the Earth. Now, they didn't say relative to the Earth, but what we have to uh, realize is that if they don't tell us what the velocity is relative to, we are to assume it is relative to the Earth, now, if I consider the formula over here on the right-hand side, okay, that is the relative velocity formula. Written another way, it would be written as the velocity of one item relative to the second item, all right, is equal to the velocity of the first item related to the third item, plus then the velocity of the third item related to the second. If I want to find this, okay, then what I'm thinking about is how can I set this up so that it is this resultant vector here in the formula, and what would be my component vectors, right? So if I were to think about this being my one and this being my two, the third object in the um, problem is the ship, right? So let me just set up the equation. So then it would be the velocity of the water relative to the ship plus the velocity of the ship relative to the earth. So if I know these two things, right? If I know those two things, then I can simply sum them up and that would equal the uh, resultant velocity is what we're looking for, the velocity of the Gulf Stream or the water relative to the Earth. Now remember, when we're talking about summations of vectors, we can only sum them in the pure x or pure y uh, direction. So what that means is that this should there really should be a sub y here, let's say, okay, or a sub x, all right? We can't purely just add vectors if they're in two dimensions at the same time. We have to break them up into components. Now, let's see what we're given. Okay, so do we know the velocity of the ship relative to the Earth? Well, we do, right? Here it is. They told it to us. Okay, great. So I can take this vector, break it up into its components, and then uh, I can put that into my component table, right? All right, so that works. How about this? Do I know this? Well, they gave me the velocity of the ship relative to the water, but I need to know the velocity of the water relative to the ship. So we actually know it. Uh, but um, we just have to take the given information of the velocity of the ship relative to the water and then negate all of the values. What do I mean? Remember that the velocity of AB is equal to negative velocity of BA. So since I know the velocity of the ship relative to the water, in order to find the velocity of the water relative to the ship, I just have to negate all the values. All the x components, I negate them, and all the y components, I negate them. All right? So it's, it's basically as simple as that. So why don't we begin, now that I have talked in length about how to approach this. So let's take a look now at, uh, let's do the first vector here in red. Okay, I'm just going to draw it so we have enough room. So this is 25 degrees. Right? And its velocity here was 4.00. So now break it up into the components. And we see that we have a y component here. Yeah, let me draw it a little bit more there. So we have a y component, and this is going to be positive. I know I'm going to have to negate it, but let's not worry about that for right now. And then I have an x component, right, which is negative um, at right now, but then I'll have to negate it. So it's essentially going to become positive. All right. And remember that here we are talking about this vector represents the velocity of the ship relative to the water. All right. So first, let's take a look at um, let's take a look at this, the x velocity vector. So I know the hypotenuse. I know this angle. I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle. And therefore, I'm going to use sine. 
Okay, so sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So therefore the sine of 25 is going to equal negative, right? The velocity of the ship relative to the water in the x direction divided by the velocity of the ship relative to the water, which we know what that is, right? That's the hypotenuse, it's a four, right? For uh, 0.00 meters per second. So now it's simply gonna be negative velocity of the ship relative to the water in the x direction is equal to, so sine of 25 times four, 1.69. Okay, so this works out to be 1.69 meters per second. All right, I'm just gonna leave out the units. They're all gonna be meters per second just to save a little room. And then remember, we just gotta transfer the negative sign on over, okay? So let me just erase this, all right? And I'm just gonna move the negative sign over here. Now, this is not necessarily what we want, right? We wanna find the velocity of the water relative to the ship, not the ship relative to the water. So therefore, what I'm gonna do is write over here now, the velocity of the water relative to the ship in the x direction, therefore, should be the negative of this value of negative 1.69, right? So just keeping it simple, just make it positive, 1.69. Now this is the value I want, okay? So where are we going to, what are we gonna do with this value now? Well, let's create our component table, all right? So I'm gonna do it up here. So here's my component table. By the way, you don't need the component table to actually, right? I mean, solve the problem. It's just a nice way to organize our thoughts, okay? The more organized we are, the more likely we will be not to make any errors, although it's not error proof, okay? So what I need here is the velocity of the water relative to the ship, and when I take that vector and add it, the components of that vector and add it to the components of the velocity of the ship relative to the Earth, I obtain the resultant vector, which in this problem is the velocity of the water relative to the Earth, which is what I want, okay? So this value I just found is the velocity of the water relative to the ship in the x direction so that 1.69 goes here. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the y vector. All right, I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle, I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle, therefore I'm going to use cosine. So cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And I know you might be saying, well, wait a minute, don't I always use cosine to find x, and now I'm using it to find y, and I know I did sine over here to find x, what's going on? Well, that's because you have an angle here that's relative to the y-axis, okay? Sine, well, you use uh, cosine to find x only when the angle is relative to the x-axis, which would be like an angle there. I could have found that by subtracting 25 from 90, but I'm just using the given information. So it doesn't matter how you do it, but just keep that in mind. Don't just memorize that x is always cosine and sine is always uh, for y. It depends, all right, what angle is given. Anyway, enough with the rant. So here we have cosine of tw uh, 25 will be equal to now uh, positive, right? Uh, the velocity of the ship relative to the water in the y direction, all over the hypotenuse value of four. So simply now just do your cross multiplication and that should be cosine of 25 times four, 3.63, okay? So this is 3.63. Now remember, this is positive, right? Because it's in the positive y, but I don't wanna know the velocity of the ship relative to the water, I wanna know the velocity of the water relative to the ship. And therefore I just have to negate this answer, okay? So negative 3.63, that's the value. Plug that into your component table right here, negative 3.63, wunderbar. Now, guess what? We get to move on to our next vector, right? The velocity of the ship relative to the Earth, here it is here, and they gave it to us, right in gold in my original picture. So let me just create a new coordinate system just to make things nice, all right? I don't need to go crazy here. Um, let me just put in the angle. Obviously, that's not a five degree angle, but the picture's a little small, so I'm just gonna blow it up there, but remember that that's five degrees and the hypotenuse here is 4.80, okay? Breaking that up into its components, we would have this being the uh, y component, excuse me, and that's positive vy. And then I have, whoops, and then I have this being the x component, right? and that's in the x direction. So vx, and it's negative because it's pointing to the left. So now I don't need to negate anything here. All I gotta do is find the values and I can plug them in. So first let's do the uh, x component. Remember, I know the hypotenuse, I know the angle, and I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle. So again, I'm going to use sine to find x here. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite side of the hypotenuse. So I have sine of five being equal to 
the velocity of the ship relative to the Earth. Remember, that's what the that's what the uh, vector represented there in gold. Okay, velocity of the ship relative to the Earth in the x direction. Remember, it's negative. Don't forget that. Otherwise, that could be a source of a silly mistake. Uh, divided by 4.80. Okay, so now let's just do cross multiplication of the x equals now sine of five, sine of five times 4.8. 0 0.418, right? 0 0.0.418, and then simply bring the negative sign on over. Oop, so we're gonna take care of that. Okay, I just erased it, and there's the negative sign. Take this value, plug it in. So this is negative 0 0.418. Okay, now let's find the value for um, the y, right? I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle, I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle now, therefore I'm gonna use cosine. So cosine of theta, adjacent over hypotenuse, cosine of five will be equal to, um, this is now positive, right, of the velocity of the ship relative to the water in the y direction, divided by 4.80. So now the velocity of the ship relative to the water um, in the y direction should be equal to, so cosine five, cosine five times 4.8. And we get a value of 4.78, okay. Wonderful, so we get 4.78. Yep, that's great. And now take that value and plug it in. So here we got 4.78, okay? So now all we have to do, that we have our component table set up, now we just gotta add the values, all right, of the X and the Y separately. So now simply take 1.69 and minus 0.418. So we get a value of 1.27. Uh, Right, so 1.27, great. And then how about for y? Negative 3.63 plus 4.78. And we get a value of 1.15. Okay, so we get 1.15. So these are now the values of the components of the resultant vector. And remember, that's what we are trying to find. Okay, so let's just draw it out quickly so we can gain a little intuition as to where the resultant vector would look. Right, so it looks like it's going to be, it'll definitely be in quadrant one, right? So uh, the X value, okay, so it looks like it's gonna be about there with a certain angle here, right, theta. The X value is, actually should be a little less, that almost looks greater than uh, 45. Let me just, let me just, I mean, it's not to scale, but I'm a little particular. Okay, so here's the angle. Um, I have my x component being one point, sorry, just taking a second here. So this is 1.27, and then my y uh, vector is gonna be positive 1.15, right? So that's just straight on up. And that is 1.15, and now if I had to find the resultant here, right, I would simply do Pythagorean's theorem, okay? Or what we can do, and remember that resultant is simply the velocity of the water relative to the Earth. And if I had to find that on the upper left-hand corner, it would be the velocity, since it's the resultant vector, okay, it's equal to the square root of the sum of all the x values squared plus the sum of all the y values squared. So I already summed them up. So now I just got to, whoops, change the e to an s, the velocity of the water relative to the Earth. So square root of 1.27 squared plus 1.15 squared. And now simply just plug it into your calculator. So we've got square root of 1.27 squared plus 1.15 squared. And it comes out to be 1.71, right? So we get a value of 1.71 and that is meters per second. Okay, cool. That is the velocity. That's the magnitude, all right? Now we should also give the direction. Direction meaning the angle, okay? So how do we do that? Well, if you look back to the picture over here on the right-hand side, I can use tangent, right? I know the opposite side, I know the adjacent side, therefore I can use tangent. All right, so tangent of theta, actually, let me put it in the middle here. So we have tan theta is equal to the y value over the x value. So let's just plug it in. Tan theta will equal be 1.15 over 1.27. And theta now is, so 1.15 divided by 
uh, 0.27, and then take the second tangent of 0.906, because we got around a little bit there, right? Considering significant figures. So second tangent of 0 0.906, and we get 42.2, 42.2. And that's exactly what I expected, an angle less than uh, 45 slightly. So that would be the answer now. So the full answer here is the velocity of the water relative to the earth would be 1.71 meters per second at 42.2 degrees. Go to the picture here. Here's the angle, right? It's going to be north of east, all right? So north of east. And that would then be the final, final answer here. All right, and that should make intuitive sense. Um, if you go back to the uh, original picture here, remember we had to negate this vector, right? So that vector should have looked something uh, something like this. Let me try to draw it here. Something like that, all right? Where this is the, well, looks a little curved at the end, but this is the 25, okay? So if, if I negated this vector, this would have been really the vector that I'm finding. And now if you think about, well, what is the resultant between this vector here pointing in this direction and then this vector here pointing in this direction? Well, it's probably going to be in here somewhere, right? It's going to be pointing this way or this way or this way. It all depends on the magnitudes. But my resultant did lie right in there. Okay, so it all makes sense. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it so much. I really hope this helps. And it means a lot to me if you were able to subscribe. It would definitely help us out tremendously, help us reach more students just like yourself. And uh, if you could, that'd be great. And if you can't, eh, don't worry about it. All right, thank you guys so much. Appreciate you a lot. Take care.